Hey there guys, it's Wilship checking in for potentially the last time here on GOM EXP to bring you the final group of the GSL round of 32 featuring Samsung Kong Roro, KT Rolster Stats, SK Telecom T1 Paralyze, and Startail Curious. Remember, if you've enjoyed the content that I've put up, share it as much as possible. I'd probably die with happiness if I got to go to Korea and see the GSL live, so every bit helps. Without further delay though, let's get into it. Starting out in the final group, we have a ZVP between Roro and Stats. The first game of the night begins with a gateway expand of Stats on Heavy Rain, while Roro, stealing the gas of Stats, builds up to 22 lings while getting wing speed. Catching the Stalkers and Zealots of Stats out on the map, Roro is able to run right into Nacho, killing it as the Militia Core gets back, taking a very quick game number one. Speedily hopping into the second game of the night, Roro goes three hats before pool on Ultra Z Malter, while Stats goes Nexus first, then curiously into Forge with a cannon, seeming like he is afraid of the potential aggression of Roro again. Being cross spawned, Stats gets out a few Phoenixes to eliminate Overlords, but follows up with a Robo and goes up to eight gateways for an attack that will have to traverse the whole map. Roro very quickly spots the attack and picks off a sentry, giving him a better chance to defend. The incoming attack from Stats is still very strong though and Stats gets into a good position at the third. Maybe feeling overconfident, Roro tries to defend with roaches only and builds no spine crawlers and with perfect force fields, Stats gains momentum and is able to power on through to his first win. Daedalus Point is the map choice of Roro and the game begins pretty standard. Stats decides not to cover the whole ramp on Daedalus and Roro sees this and builds extra links to force out the Photon Overcharge pretty early on. Then preps for another run by with more links after the overcharge is done, but the wall is completed making the links of Roro useless. Roro heads up to Lair while getting a Roach Horn and Stats gets himself a Twilight Council Robo and a third base with a ton of gateways at the same time that Roro preps for a small lean Roach attack. Stats deflects this until he moves out and Roro sends a small counter force, but with Blink and a quick decision to turn around, Stats defends with zero losses. This game quickly ascends into multitasking madness as we start to see Roro, while getting a large number of swarm hosts, constantly splitting up small and large groups of roaches to pull stats back. Stats, playing mind games, does not actually use the third base, and as stats moves out, Roro counters with a large group of roaches that manage to unpower every gateway at the third base. Stats, though, is able to kill the third of Roro, but has lost a good number of probes in the natural nexus, but begins to stabilize back at his base. Every time, though, that stats tries to move out, Roro has been maneuvering to try and spot the push out. Stats, though, without bleeding too much army, is able to leech off kills and eventually gets up to Colossi and is able to push out. Of course, Roro wants nothing to do with that force and tries to pull back, but catching a ton of drones in transit and with good positional play, Stats is able to take the first series and head on to the winner's match. Alright, now time for Paralyze vs. Curious. Which one of these two players will play against Stats for a chance to move on quickly? Beginning our second PvZ, we head into Habitation Station. We have Curious going for that further away non-gold expansion for safety, while Paralyze gets that gold as his natural base. With the Robo and a ton of gateways and no indication of a third, Paralyze sets up for a gold base backed all in. Getting spines, roaches, and adding in lings, Curious is caught off guard as the Warp Prism of Paralyze enters his main and kills a ton of drones. While simultaneously, Curious pulls Paralyze back with a Roachling attack that eventually gets cleaned up. With no third base in sight for Paralyze, Curious cleans up the drop and conducts another brutal counter as Paralyze moves out to cost a third of the Zerg player. Having bought himself enough time though, Curious has dealt game ending damage to Paralyze with the counter and is able to defend, taking game number one. Hopping on to Yonsu, we see some pretty standard play, except for the 10 early lins made by Curious that get defended, but manage to kill a building gateway and Zealot as Curious takes his third, 
showcasing another pinpointing and responsive Ling attack out of a Zerg player. Paralyze soon takes his third himself, but Curious has been able to see everything. Paralyze moves out for a poke to force out units, and Curious uses these units to pin the Protoss as he gets out Mutas in a fourth base. Paralyzed is not prepared for the Mutas and desperately tries to get out two Stargates. But with a triple pronged attack, Curious takes a ton of sentries out at the third, snipes the natural with roaches, and brings the Phoenix count to zero with his Mutas in the main. Down 100 supply, the options of Paralyzed are limited numerous times, and Curious takes a dominating game number two, giving us at least two more PvZ series. The winner's match will now be a PvZ between Curious and Stats. So, starting out on Polar Night, we see Curious going double half before pool against a gateway, Corlys Expand. As Stats moves out with the first couple of units, a small group of wings sneak by and getting into the main of Stats do surprisingly little damage to the good micro Stats. While getting Blink and Plus to attack, as has been characteristic of Stats, he gets his third base with a ton of extra gateways. At the same time, he moves out as Curious gets his fourth base, the macro hatch, and the move out gets struck down by nearly 200 supply worth of roaches that speedily push the natural and force stats out immediately. Curious is looking like the Protoss Smiter in this group, so is now up to stats to try and see if he can find a chink in his armor. On Alter Zim Alter, both players start out with greedy openers, but again we see Stats get that defensive cannon. Nothing too insane happens in the early game, and Stats looks to be going for the same build as he did on this map against Roro, but then continues with pro production against Void Rays and a Robotics Bay while going for his third. Curious playing reactively and not falling for the bait or getting tricked continues on with this tech and commits heavily to Mutas after seeing the low anti-air and decimates the natural of Stats. Curious, trying to take advantage of the vastness of Alter Zim, begins to going purely Corruptor Muta and contain stats in three base for as long as possible while taking as many bases as possible for himself, but is lacking a little bit in the upgrade. Realizing this, stats gets a ton of Phoenixes, but there are just too many Corruptors, and eventually Curious kills the natural stats and then the fourth at the cost of an army he can instantly rebuild anyways. Stats is eventually able to stabilize for a while and mine from the fourth base, but Curious has been upgrading and getting Ultra Broodlord. With Tempest and a terrible engagement of Curious, Stats is actually able to take a nice engagement, and Curious remaxes on pure Muta. Taking a fearless second engagement against Blink Stalkers, Archons, and High Templars, Curious somehow wipes out the potential of Stats being able to survive any longer, and Stats is forced to GG out. So, Curious will be the first player to advance to the round of 16 from Group H. In a match that will determine whether or not we'll have all PBZs tonight, we will see who between Roro and Paralyze will move on to face Stat. Let's see if we can move on to the round of 16. Alright, so I'll be in the first game, we have some pretty standard stuff with no early shenanigans. Paralyze does apply a bit of pressure with his gateway expand, but nothing significant happens with it, and he takes a pretty quick third. Both players sit back and secure their third, but Roro, after having forced out a lot of energy of Paralyze during a failed move out, begins a huge roach ling attack that splits Paralyze from his third, is able to take a sturdy game one actually pretty quickly. In potentially the last game of Paralyze in Code S, we see him commit to a cannon rush, which Rover basically ignores, canceling the base and then taking the gold in Southern expansion instead. Paralyze follows up with the Stargate into Oracle, then Void Ray, to which Roro gets a fast Roach one. Roro begins to amass Roaches and Hydras and takes his fourth that is natural, while applying pressure to the natural and third of Paralyze, killing a couple of two starport produced Void Rays at the cost of a good portion of his army. Paralyze though has been committing heavily to Sky Toss and he is making a huge amount of Tempest where Roro gets his Swarmos and Corruptors out. This game soon becomes one of those games you just don't really forget. Paralyzed begins to get a hold of the game and gets a ridiculous amount of Tempest, but finds it very difficult to move out due to the immobility of his army. Hope though seems lost for Roro as his massively destructive Protoss force begins to move out. But with some of the best of ducks I've ever seen, Roro is able to pick off Void Rays with great fumbles and pulls from the Viper. 
The game, though, turns extremely passive as Paralyzed begins to take the southern bases while denying those bases from Roro, and Roro begins to get starved out. Eventually, with unorthodox play, Paralyzed is able to take a game number two in an interesting and unique show of style. Daedalus Point is the battleground for the next game, and we see Roro going patch gas against a Forge Expand and Paralyze. Without a Zealot out, though, a few Lini get in the base of Paralyze and deal some crippling damage when Speed gets finished, delaying mining time and getting free kills. Those Links stay alive along so long, in fact, that they are even able to scout to follow Stargate, but the Oracle of Paralyze manages to still get some decent kills on the third. Though delayed early on, Paralyze still decides to get a pretty fast third base while taking up to Colossus. Roro has been building up a large amount of Hydra's zone, puts on the pressure, forcing on a lot of energy use while taking up to Spire. With a ton of blings and a huge arc, Hydra deals massive damage, but Paralyze barely holds just as the Colossus gets out. And while the Muta switch is strong, Paralyze foresees this and has Phoenix is ready to defend. With a large Phoenix block, Paralyze takes a fourth base a bit after Roro, and we seem to be prepared to enter into the late game between these two players. Roro, though, seems to be wanting to try and play this game out on layer tech, and with an impressive attack on the third, engages into the army of Paralyze and absolutely eradicates it, taking the final game of the series. With Roro advancing out of the losers match, this means we'll have our fifth and final PVZ of Group H and of the round of 32 with a rematch between Stats and Roro. Alter Zim is the first map and it starts out like most games do. Both players playing incredibly greedy, Roro getting a quick three bases and Stats getting three bases in the Void Ray Colossus after a Stargate opener. However, something that happens that is not like most games is that Roro gets two Roach Warrens for both upgrades and goes basically all in. At first, it seems like the attack is a complete bot, but picking and pulling stats apart, running speedy burrowed Roaches to every corner of the base and picking off key units, Roro just out multitask stats and takes an unexpectedly quick game number one. Hopping into heavy rain, you see a pool then hatch build for Roro against a Forge Fast Expands out of Stats. Stats then sets up for a plus two blink build with a Nexus against the standard three bases, Lair, and Roaches out of Roro. With a nice Ling aggression, Roro is able to kill a few sentries and burn some force fields to help lessen the incoming push. Stats cuts probe production with the extra base and begins the assault. But with so many Lings, Roaches, and Queens, Roro keeps defending wave after wave by sniping observers, barely reinforcing and knocking down the rocks. On even worker zone with awesome blink stats is eventually able to bust through and take game number two. On the final game of all of the GSL Codes round of 32 for season one, stats proxies two gates on Polar Knight where Roro sounds at a drone scout and realizes what is happening by scouting the main. Roro holds off the first zealot against two spines and Stats decides to control Roro's ramp, but gets repelled by the queens and spines. As a contingency plan, Stats starts building cannons at the bottom of the ramp that nearly gets broken, but Stats holds. In a blunder though, Stats, believing that Roro wouldn't keep producing wings, tries to break up the ramp and kills a queen, but loses his positioning on the low ground, and Roro expands. But the stalkers of stats arrive and start to kill overlords, supply capping Roro and pressuring the natural of Roro. With the macro hatcher in barely mining from the natural hatch, Roro keeps just barely not being able to repel stats, who scarcely keeps maintaining the proxy gates. But eventually, with the natural save, Roro slowly strangles stats as he fights to keep himself alive in code S. But Roro does not let him slip, gets Swarm us out, and will advance along with Curious. With that, we conclude Group H with Curious dominantly advancing 2-0 and Roro moving on 2-1 in a close group over Stats and Paralyze, who both dropped down to Code A. This was the last group for the GSL round of 32, so if you'd like to keep up with the GSL, make sure to check out the games live at twitch.tv slash GSL. If you're watching these videos as I upload them, I do plan to now backtrack and do the groups from earlier that I wasn't able to start in time, so be on the lookout for those. 
if you're watching from the playlist, then that part really didn't matter because you probably already watched those. Anyways, like always, SMLship checking out. Peace.